All right, Trump supporters, I've got your man. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. You know, it's actually an interesting concept, the, the, the ad lib. Everything I do here is ad lib. Uh, the Trump supporters. Well, right now, if we really are holding to that which we cherish, as Hillary Clinton so eloquently stated yesterday, we're all Trump supporters right now because we support America. And it's got a hard thing for a lot of people to come to, but you better come to it quick. Welcome in. Nice to have you. We do have a new president-elect, and uh, like it or not, it's time to figure out, you know, how we thrive as a nation. The uh, chairperson for the honorary chairperson for the uh, Trump campaign, Joe Trillo, is back. And, man, is he all smiles, understandably. So let me introduce him in just a second. A couple of headlines here. Uh, by the way, coming up later in the broadcast, we'll have Ted and Dan in here to talk about some of the local races. Obama-Trump met at the White House earlier today. And, of course, that's amidst headlines like this. Oh, he's not my president. Rallies last night across the country and here in Providence. Um, and then there's a 100-day thing. And listen, that's not unique to Donald Trump. There's always a 100-day thing. But his 100 days will be even more interesting because what he's promising on day one. Now, is that figurative or literal? I'm going to get a lesson on that, and so are you from his chair tonight, who tells me I just don't understand the difference between the two. Um, and he will, you know, don't shake your head over there. Here's, uh, here's what it was like in the, uh, in the White House today as, give them both credit, lickety-split, they got together. It is important for all of us, regardless of party uh, and regardless of political preferences, uh, to now come together, work together, to deal with uh, the many challenges that we face. Uh, we want to do everything we can to help you succeed, because if you succeed, then the country succeeds. Please. Okay. Well, thank you very much, President Obama. Uh, this was a meeting that was going to last for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and uh, we were just going to get to know each other. We had never met each other. Uh, I have great respect. Uh, the meeting lasted for almost an hour and a half, and it could have, as far as I'm concerned, it could, could have gone on for a lot longer. We really um, — we discussed a lot of different situations, some wonderful and some difficulties. And so there you have it. Congratulations. Thank you. I will take that congratulations because it was a very exciting win. Very exciting win. And I think Donald Trump is going to be great for this country. I don't want to be a party pooper. But he, but got, you are. he got beat by 14 <laughs> in Rhode Island and, I don't know, 25 in Massachusetts. So it's an interesting place to be, this southern New England territory, is it not? It is, but you have to understand that we have a democratic machine that probably had good 10 percent of the votes in their back pocket. So for him to do as well as he did against the Democratic machine, I think is incredible. I don't think he did very well at all. Well, I think 39.6 percent in Rhode right, Island, 34 right. percent in Massachusetts. Yeah. You get that for signing your I'm name talking, down. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about Rhode Island. 39.6 uh, percent in Rhode Island. He goes up against the Democratic stack machine. Ten percent of the votes already in the pocket. Listen, let, I'm, just, I'm just saying, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, he, he grasped a lot of what uh, mainstream America w was saying, but not everyone was saying it here. But and look at all the cities and towns that he won. He won a lot of cities and towns. Romney didn't 15 win. Fifteen versus three. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he won cities and towns. Where is he getting his stronghold? Is he getting his stronghold from the takers? All the taker cities, Providence, Central Falls, Pawtucket, that's where all the takers are. And you know what? They came out, they came out in force. They always do in Rhode Island because they, they have to keep their candy store open. If they don't keep their candy store open, they're out of business. You are. You are. I'm You're freelancing. <laughs> <laughs> the maker versus taker speech, not unfamiliar to a lot of you, I'm sure. Uh, having said that, uh, there's no doubt that this is the, the most dramatic presidential win, I think, in modern history. People are saying, uh, just let's not kid ourselves, in modern history, it's the most uh, uh, compelling election night, I think, that we've ever had. Yes. Yeah, I agree. It was just uh, an overwhelming night. I mean, all the polls were wrong. Think of the polls, how wrong they were. Now, I've been saying right along, there's a big closet vote because of all the people, all the Democrats in Rhode Island that have come up to me in the last year and told me, he's my guy, he's my guy. But you can't 
total it. There's no way, and you're not going to poll it, and I've been saying that right along. Democrats are not going to admit when you call them in a survey that they're going to, uh, in a poll, that they're going to vote for uh, a Republican. They're just not going to admit it. But so many of them did in the other cities and towns other than Providence and Central Falls and Pawtucket. Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting study to go back and take a look at the polling data, the models, and what really happened, and whether that was a, a uh, uh, you know, an L.A. mayor type of a moment where people just didn't want to admit that they were making a vote, um, or whether this was just a, uh, a fallout of uh, energy for Hillary Clinton. The African-American vote doesn't measure near what Barack Obama had in 2012. Um, when it comes right down to it, Mitt Romney was only about uh, 700,000 votes short of what Donald Trump provided. Now, is that the same electorate? No, I get all the arguments. Uh, clearly, there was a lot more energy for Donald Trump within the 120 million voters than there was for Hillary Clinton. At the same time, she had a couple hundred thousand more voters. So obviously it comes but out there's, of California. There's an argument it's against very the popular vote. Too. Yeah, I'm not going to make that argument. And by the way, it's really interesting though. Donald Trump made that argument in, in the 2012 favor of the race. Popular vote? You know, that that the electoral college was killing yeah. democracy. I never said he knew everything. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that might be the understatement. But having said that, you know, at this point, you know, day two now, as I'm recovering as a non-Trump uh, uh, guy, didn't vote for Hillary, by the way. Again, I emphasize. Um, things, things, you know, his temperament there, his temperament on the evening. Uh, temperament has been one of the things that I think a lot of people have been very nauseous about with him. We'll see how it goes. But I think, so far, so good, it seems. Yes, and I think you're going to see a very presidential Donald Trump. The, the race is over, the competition is over, and he won. You're going to see a, a different Trump. You're going, you're going to see what you're seeing today, him visiting the president, him trying to extract as much as he can out of everybody. That's a smart business well, you, know, you know, this is the thing that drives me crazy, and you're a veteran of politics, and I know that, uh, uh, well, here's the, here's the quote uh, from Jalen Zito on The Atlantic that I, I referred to on radio and television yesterday. The press, hate, uh, the pre press takes him literally, but not seriously. His supporters take him seriously, but not literally. You have a feeling about that, right? Oh, a very strong feeling about it. When, when you talk literally and you take everything anybody says, we're going to shut off all Muslims from coming into this country. You take that literally and you go to the bank with it. I don't take it like that. I take it figuratively. It's an exaggeration for effect. Exaggeration for effect. Is he going to do it? No. He's not going to do that. I don't believe he's going to do it. Um, we take, we're going to build a wall. Is he going to build a wall? Yeah. There's a lot of ways of building a wall. He didn't give you the plan for the wall. The wall doesn't have to be bricks and mortar, cement. Oh, it could be mesh. It could be anything. Oh, I see. It could be electronic. It's going to be four foot in mesh. It could be as opposed to 15 feet in stone and cement. It, what, part of what's on the border. It had to be eight. Part of what's on the border right now. By the way, is there anything in politics that we're supposed to actually take literally? This notion that it's all nothing but a figurative uh, a thinking contest, an essay. Well, I think uh, you need to know the politicians and what and how they're talking. Well, were we supposed to take you literally for anything that you said when you were stomping away in the state house all these years fighting the good fight? Yeah, you, or are you just full of it? I'm going to let you get away with that. Go ahead. No, seriously. No, go ahead. Go even the, even the, and this, by the way, this That's is both good. sides. The president, the president beating the living tar out of this guy's very human existence up until election night, and now he has to understandably eat crow. The eat crow factor, when once the votes are counted and the stuff comes up, all of a sudden, everything that was said in the campaign, this is for every candidate no, everywhere, that. everything that, that was said was figurative and conceptual, no. and by the way, nothing was personal, although everything was extremely, the authenticity that, American, that America wants, allegedly, Ain't existing in our political system. I think the difference in my mind, and it's very difficult to do for people. I understand that. Is some things you got to take you can take literally, and some things you got to take figuratively. 
Are we, how, do, do me a favor. How do you give know me, which to do? I don't know. Give me the cheat sheet. Yeah, well, I The will. figurative I'll, versus I'll literal according to Trillo. Because I would like to be able to, you know, sometime understand this process a little bit better. Because having professionally followed it for 35 years, I'm still a little confused as to what I'm supposed to take literally and uh, well, but, and, but, but, and, but, but and you don't take anything figuratively. That That's where I disagree with you. I think some things you need to do that with. Some things that are, that are exaggerated huh. for effect, you need to take uh, figuratively. Like this from Donald Trump. We have this. The dream. Yes, this would be what we talked about. No dream is too big. No challenge is too great. Nothing we want for our future is beyond our reach. America will no longer settle for anything less than the best. There you go. I take that totally the way he said it. Hmm. To Cause, totally cause the way he said it. See, you, no know, one feels it, that you way. know what, Dan? It's almost like a language. It really is. It's like a language. You either Code. It's, it's code, yes. And, and when you're in politics, as I have been for 16 years, you begin to, to, to understand this language. It's kind of like this, folks. It's kind of like this. You go. <laughs> right. That's right. It's another language. And you're supposed to know it's all. You're going to see a very presidential Donald Trump. That's my prediction. You're going to see him build some sort of a wall. Okay. Four foot mesh, good enough. No, no, it's not going to be. It's going to be some I'll barrier. I'll be able to jump over it. Some barrier that's going to stop the illegals yeah. from coming across it. And he'll build Mexico. He'll make Mexico pay with a rebalance of trade. It's the same thing. Congratulations. Uh, I'm excited. I'm going to talk to Dan and Ted about the local races. You want in on that Meta Yellow thing? You want to take a pass? Uh, I, I didn't follow the local races anywhere near as much as I should have. Yeah. So oh, I'm, okay. I'm going to take a pass All on right. it. We'll have to watch Trillo Talks on your local cable access <laughs> to get the lowdown on that for the figurative analysis. Thank you, my friend. Good talking to you, as always. Congratulations. Ted and Dan next. We know what we have uh, in, in mail ballots. We will get an overwhelming percentage of that conservatively, very conservatively. I know that we're going to be up minimum net of 300, so we won the race. Uh, why don't you just pretend to be a party boss that everybody despises, <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, and here was his opponent. I think it's still open, and I'm, if you're ahead about 150 votes like I am, how many absentee ballots are there out there? 500? 800? We'll find out. It's much better to go in absentee ballots ahead than behind. Okay. Uh, Dan McGowan, Ted Nisi, Nino introduction. My thesis is, and, is, and they're counting as we record this program right. tonight. So they you actually may literally have, just allowed the count to continue. You may have seen the news already now that you're watching this at 7:30 and midnight. But my guess is is that Nick Mattiello will in fact have the mail ballots to win this race. But uh, insiders would say necessary politics to hold a caucus together. Mm -hmm. If your caucus is that weak. You got problems. Well, I don't. I don't know if I'd agree with that. Only because I think uh, they, they, every they, the reason Billy Murphy called it the House of Ambition, right? Everyone sees themselves as a potential speaker. One way speakers keep power is they keep everyone on a very short leash. I think that's part of what Nick Matteo was doing here. The, the, one of the reasons I tend to, I agree with you that I, I assume he's going to pull it off on mail ballots is because it would be a, an almost ridiculously aggressive move to have declared victory that emphatically if they weren't. Re he's going to be very embarrassed. The difference between Frias and Mattiello is Mattiello has money, resources, and on the street expertise right. to go out and identify, you know, four or five hundred of the of the of the you know seven hundred that have come back mail ballots. Right. I mean, this is a this operation to especially on the mail ballot front. I mean, all campaigns it takes money and resources to be able to get boots on the ground and, and you know, GOTV like they talk about. But p particularly with mail ballots, it's complicated. You have to go to someone's house, make sure they apply for a mail ballot, go back to their house, make sure they filled out their mail ballot, potentially convince them to give you their Months mail ballot. Months of work and man hours. It takes yes. a lot of work to do and that's why Mattiel is you know, convinced that they've got, the, they've got the numbers. Some veteran politicians have, have, have uh, criticized my criticism <laughs> My criticism is, you know what, if it's that fractured, you're talking about the House of Ambition, I get it, I'm not, I'm not naive to that. 
but you can't hold your water for 36 hours you, and, and create an impression with most voters who don't understand this process okay. of mail ballot and declare victory when the numbers say you're down 147 and, and, and create an image around you that, you know, the, bada, the political yeah. bada-bing is going on? I mean, well, that, I think that's just not smart. That's one of those things, I mean, and if, any, if there was ever a week where the political reporters like Dan and I should be quite humble about uh, <laughs> how much we are really know what's going on, this is one based on Donald Trump's winning the presidency. But I think that is a perfect example of the divide between people who are sort of marinated in politics, like the politicians themselves, like people like Dan and I, like you, who, who cover it and know it well, who say, mail ballots, of course there's a mail ballot operation. Of course they have numbers back at the headquarters with mail ballots. People at home are like, he says he's going to win on ballots that had, nobody's opened. And I think, right. you know, there was a, a leap there by the Mattiello campaign, probably for internal caucus reasons, as well as maybe they just wanted to celebrate. Uh, but I, I agree, it leaves a, it's the kind of thing that leaves a bad taste in, in voters' mouths, even, even if everything's on the up and up. And of course, Bryce does not right, the, agree the with that. The average voter came back and saw that on, on you know, on television. And look, uh, in fairness, one of the reasons, aside from the caucus in, in, in that part of it, I think Mattiello probably said, oh no, if we don't do this, the reporters are all going to say we lost by 147 votes, you know, oh, but there are mail ballots to count. So they take advantage. There's a way to say, hey, listen, hold your water. We're confident about our mail ballot uh, effort, but uh, all's fair in love and war, mm. let's count them on Thursday. Uh, we're still confident we're in this race. Everybody hold their horses. I mean, that's fine. But an assurance and a yeah. declaration of victory and, and all that kind of stuff is just, you know, yeah. it, whatever. I mean, it's the, 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 it's the bet they've had. I think politically, I think Frias, I thought he would come out of the election day balloting with a more of a lead. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that the Mattiello campaign had worked on mail ballots to try to bank some votes, you say signs in politics, knowing your supporters have already cast them. Uh, and knowing Trump did well in that district, and it's a conservative lean district, I was, I, frankly, I was somewhat impressed that the Mattiello campaign kept it to 147 votes that day. You know, that's, that's frankly not, that's the kind of district the Republicans in Rhode Island should hold. Right. And particularly now the speaker is a lightning rod, making it all the harder to stay. And with Hillary Clinton not being in any way a powerful candidate who drags Democrats Yeah, I don't think it's line. a weak effort on Mediella's part. I think it was just not a smart thing yeah, to do on election night. Yeah, yeah I mean, because the basics of this, are if, you know, a voter at home who maybe doesn't pay as close attention to us as politics, they turn on TV and say, they said, how does he know? Right, right. And that makes people assume fraud and all these things. Well, to, the, to a certain extent, it's our responsibility to explain to them mm -hmm. how Absolutely. he knows. Absolutely. And Dan wrote a great right. WPRI.com article yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I rely on both of them. Without WPRI.com articles. Perfect. That's it. How would I do my job? When I come back, these guys have the floor as to what they really took from this selection locally. Stay with us. So, I think we'll have to wait for the beginning of the next chapter. I think we're uh, ahead about 260 or 270 votes, and uh, I understand there's just over 800 mail ballots. I'm Colonian with John Taylor of uh, Twin River. Good reporter. Uh, yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> um, inside, <laughs> going to the chapel. Uh, but what, what, you, what you see there from Taylor is professionalism. Yeah. You know, yeah. suggesting that, you know what, you know, at the same time, he doesn't have to hold a caucus together. He's just right. got a mm -hmm. question. So I get the difference between the two, but that sells more. Um, have at it. we got four or five minutes here. Well, uh, I think Donald Trump, the press, journalism in general, local issues, local races, you tell me. Locally, I... I was surprised it was such a weak night for Republican candidates and conservative candidates for the General Assembly here uh, in Rhode Island. Lost two on the House and lost uh, one on the Senate. Apparently, we're waiting yeah. for the mail ballots. But yeah, it does not. It may be that the Republicans don't pick up any. They don't net gain any new additional seats, even if it switches around who has what. I, you know, I don't think that's a sign that vote. There was no that tolls and Gina Raimondo's issues and stuff didn't resonate. I just think a combination of good campaigns apparently by them and, and maybe still a presidential year drag them across the finish line in a lot of cases. But on the other hand, I think when you look at these results for Hillary Clinton, I do want to see the mail ballots because there's so many, but you saw a drop in Democratic turnout. And I think you can see when you look at the towns, it appears we have the same situation in Rhode Island that we're seeing nationally, where a lot of working class voters, white working class voters, who were still pulling the letter for Democrats, despite Democrats losing so many of those voters over the past few decades, were just not turning out for her. Yeah, I'm, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and when you look at it across the state, I mean, with that turnout being a little bit, although I think after mail ballots, you've written that 
turnout will end up being probably potentially the second highest in, in yeah. you know, in history in, or, or in recent history in Rhode Island. But, you, you know, in some of those places, I, I was very surprised that Republicans weren't able to maybe pick up a little bit more because they've had this great narrative and, and they had a good candidate in this in, in District 15 that, you know, maybe statewide would have made people excited. But you know, what you wonder, maybe two years from now that you know, frustration holds, and maybe they think they're mm -hmm. going to be more successful two years from now. But I, I was. Oh yeah, surprised. I think it's a warning shot for 2018. Mm -hmm. I think Gina Raimondo should be worried yeah. about her re-election. Um, I think, you know, you, you see, I, I was a little less. It's still stunning to me Donald Trump's going to be president. Just knowing him from The Apprentice and stuff, right? It's still an amazing thing that's happened. But I was a little less shocked. People were willing to go into the ballot booth for him all year and even this week because of 2014 in Rhode Island when you had Bob Healy get more than 20% of the vote for governor, when you know everyone was saying, oh, he's a protest vote, this, that, and the other thing. When you had Buddy Cianci, who had the whole media establishment against him, the whole political establishment against him, everyone said, you can't elect somebody who went to jail, and he gets 44% of the vote in Providence. That said to me, voters, a lot of voters are tired of experts telling them, you have to do this. Brexit was the same thing over in England. You have to do this. That's irresponsible. That's a move you're not allowed to make. If it's on the ballot, there's a, a, maybe a growing number of voters are going to say. I also think it's about relationship. It's a lot about relationship, hard work on the ground, mm -hmm. and you know themes, even mm -hmm. tolls. We react after we've been hurt. Mm -hmm. We don't react preemptive to being hurt. Until mm -hmm. the tolls come up, there won't be a, there'll be a political reaction when the tolls go up. Mm -hmm. And, and, and cars get hit, mm -hmm. then there'll be Armageddon. Oh, if there. it goes to cars, I think it's it's game over for a lot of. But you have they have to. It's got to be right there. But right. that's frankly that's why I still am skeptical it will go to cars, mainly because the, there's a reason the Democrats have had the majority in the House since World War II. Listen, they all don't it's going really to take is a, is a successful lawsuit by the Trucking Association, where it says, you know what, we've been discriminated against, and and and, and right. the legislature then by the simple change of a language in a law, moves it from cars to trucks, and, and they say to the constituents, sorry, Ted, you know, I'm the rep, sorry, Teddy, you know, I didn't want to do that to you, but the court made me. You I, can't, know? I can't rule out, just, that, all, that already sounds like political suicide to me. Oh, no doubt, but it's coming. It's, it's absolutely coming. By the way, I had to remind Mr. Trillo of something. <clears throat> Donald Trump got 39.6% here in Rhode Island and 34% in Massachusetts. The sea change didn't hit here. No, no. Well, that's, and that's kind of the point I was making about the drop in Democratic turnout. It's, right now, Donald Trump only has 8,000 more votes than Mitt Romney, which in a, in a voter pool of 420,000, that's not a lot of votes. It, it's really here, it appears to be a lot about Democratic turnout. Um, but he did, you know, towns flipped partly because of that. It was also interesting in the towns that flipped the other way, uh, especially East Greenwich and Barrington. East Greenwich was a Romney town, and this time it was a double-digit right. Hillary town. Barrington, Trump sunk down to, I think, around 31% of the vote. Because reportedly, the more educated and affluent you were, the more you were inclined to vote for Hillary Clinton and be wary of Donald Trump. Mm. Yeah, and that's, I mean, certainly that's what all the, the exit polls suggest and everything like that. I mean, I guess we'll start to see it more. That's been the narrative this entire time, right? The narrative was could... Donald Trump pull a, a you know non-college educated white voters and make them vote as a block. It appears that happened, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty simple nationally, locally. You know, certainly in the Northeast, it's tougher to do that. Ten second take on what you learned from the election. God, <laughs> I think we learned be humble because as reporters, yes. we all thought Donald Trump was was had no chance in this one. Yes, I, humility. Uh, yeah. I, I try to always be humble as a reporter, but uh, this has really reinforced yeah. the importance of that. Well, they're humble enough for the whole show. <laughs> we want you to tell us how great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'll just, I'll just go for the last word. We'll be right back. So you look back on the presidential race, and one of the things you might point to is the FBI Director James Comey letter in late October, the October surprise. The process on how that happened and what went on with that. How about some perspective on that from former U.S. Attorney Robert Corrente? He will be my guest tomorrow night on the program for the entire show and talk about all those dynamics, okay? In the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow and talk to you tomorrow on the phone lines at 3 o'clock until 6 on WPRO. Quite the week, huh? Oh, and don't worry, we'll get some protesters too because you like to chew them up and spit them out. Good night. <laughs>